We are so glad to have with us today uh, Brother Stacy Nobles. I already said a little bit about him earlier on, but uh, he came and did uh, Disciple Now for us a little over a year ago, did a great job. And uh, uh, I tell you what, uh, he is one uh, football coach that I have always had the utmost of respect for. And so uh, you pray for him today as he comes and shares with us. So Brother Stacy, you come on and welcome to beautiful downtown Rents. Amen. All right. <laughs> Well, good morning. I, I I appreciate the opportunity uh, for uh, that that brother Tom has presented with me today or for me today to be here. Uh, I, I've told y'all this before when I've been here in, in the past. Uh, this church is dear to me. I appreciate all that uh, that this body has done for us and through our program out at West Lawrence for the past six years. Uh, the time y'all fed our kids, the time that y'all prayed for us, the time that y'all allowed me to come to speak. Uh, it's just been awesome, and uh, I will be forever uh, in debt to you and the, and the body, and I pray that you'll continue to do that with the program out there. They're in good hands. Uh, Coach McLean is, is going to do a good job, and uh, and the most important thing is he's going to continue to preach the truth to these kids, and that's that's that was my, my biggest thing. Uh, you know, it's uh, But it is a, a huge honor for me to be able to be here today. Um, uh, you know, never in a million years graduates. I mean, and this is just a... Uh, an unbelievable time for you. I tried when I, when I got to preparing for these, and, and Brother Tom called me a couple months ago, and it was about that same as that time that Mr. Garnto asked me to do the uh, to do the baccalaureate service. And uh, uh, you know, I, I got to thinking. I knew that some, and I knew that some would be at both. And and I prayed and asked God to help me come up with two. You know, to give me two different words for you, and He's done that. You know, so I just want to. You know, I hope you won't stay away from the baccalaureate tonight because you know that. Uh, you'll have to hear me speak again, but uh, God has given me a word. But God has given me a word for both services, and uh, it's an important message. Uh, it's, it's something that God God has been doing an amazing work in my life, in my family's life over the past couple months, uh, and just. Uh, he, he's teaching me things, and the things that he's teaching me, I'm having the opportunity. Uh, you know, since I resigned from West Lawrence, uh, I guess about two months ago now, uh, God has allowed me to, to be able to preach it. I think six different times at different churches, and and uh, you know, he's just been you know, never graduates when I if I, if I when I think back to when I was in your position right now, uh, sitting there at 18 years old back in 1996, never in a million years would I have imagined. Uh, that God would would have me uh, not preaching one service on a graduation Sunday, but preaching two services, uh, three hour, three or four hours apart. I never in a million years imagined that that I would even be a teacher. That was not my goal when I left uh, when I left uh, high school. I, I never imagined uh, that I would be doing what I'm what God's using me to do now. And uh, you know, I'm very thankful for that. I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve to be up here. God has is, is nothing but the amazing grace of God. That he has allowed me to to be able to do what this is, and you know, it took. I fought it for years, and uh, and graduate someone. We're going, uh, you know, when I was looking at the messages and, and praying about what to tell you today, uh, you know, a lot of times when you hear these graduation services or these baccalaureate services, it's more of a it's more of a speech. It's more of a motivational deal to to do, you know you're gonna go you know you're gonna do this you're gonna do that you know go do this you, you're excited this time. Uh, but, the, you know, the number one thing that God has showed me is that, uh, you know, it's, it's not about me giving a speech today. It's about me preaching the Word of God. It's about me giving you the truth that God has showed me and that He's using and He's working in my life. I haven't got this thing figured out by any stretch of the imagination. I don't. It is, like Brother Van said just a second ago, it is hard to be a true follower of Jesus Christ in this world. It's hard. It's hard to stay on track. It's hard to stay grounded. It's hard to stay in the Word. And I, why is that? Why is that? It's so hard for us to stay, uh, you know. And, and we've got, we've got our. Is that me? That's not me. Okay. <laughs> okay. Just check. I don't know if I had a. I thought I had my cell phone for enough. I don't know if I had a. I know if I had a malfunction or something going on up here. Anyway, but. But just uh, the things that got, you know, there's so many distractions in this world. And you graduates, I mean, I think back to when I was graduating in 1996, the, pre the pressures and the, and the temptations that we had don't even, don't even compare to the things that y'all go through and y'all deal with now. You know, so it is more important than ever for us not only to pray for these graduates today, 
and to pray for these graduates' families, but we need to lift them up and make it a point to pray for them daily and to continue to pray for them as they go on and take this next step. Because I can tell you just from my experience in just a public school, uh, some of these public universities, there are, there are people out there, like, like God says in the Bible, that are, are like lions trying to devour trying to destroy our young people, trying to wash their minds. And, you know, and they, you all heard the numbers about the amount of kids that graduate from high school and get away from the church and never come back. And we've got to put an end to that. And the way we put an end to that is by staying grounded in prayer, by staying in God's Word. We cannot do it. We, can't, we as adults, we can't do that. We have got to stay at the foot of Jesus Christ. We've got to stay grounded and we've got to stay prayed up and read up. We've got to be in the Bible all the time. And that's our instruction book. Okay, so that my challenge, I, I'm going to present some challenges today. Uh, you know, I'm a football coach by nature. That's what, you know, God is, is everything I do, I want to compete. I want to compete. I like competing I, and I want you to compete. And I want you to understand God led me to, to Jeremiah this morning for the message. Okay, we're going to be in the book of Jeremiah. And, you know, the book of Jeremiah talks about, you know, I, I've been studying and looking at what Jeremiah, the prophet, uh, you know, just some facts about Jeremiah. And, uh, you know, Jeremiah was known as the, uh, as the weeping prophet. And uh, I, had, I'd never heard that before. I, I didn't know what that meant. I, well, I got to studying and looking at it. And it tells us in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 1, this is just an illustration of, of what... Jeremiah had a heart for God's people. That's, that's why he was known as the weeping prophet. In chapter 9, verse 1, it says, Oh, that my head were a spring of water and my eyes a fountain of tears. I would weep day and night for the slain of my people. He had a, he had a desire for the people. And, uh, you know, you look at, the, look at uh, the, the prophet Jeremiah, some of the facts about him. He was one of the foremost prophets of Judah. Uh, just prior to the Babylonian destruction and captivity. Uh, his heart was, was broken. His heart was broken. That's where this talks from. This is where the weeping prophet comes from. His heart was broken over the sin of Jerusalem and the judgment that they had brought on themselves. He was, that, he was distraught for that, much like we should be, for the people around us, for our families. If we see people, our friends, that we know are not on the right track, that are making the wrong decisions, our hearts should be broken. That should break our hearts. Right. Well, that should break our hearts that people are not where they need to be and not, not following God and not doing the things of God. That should break our heart. We need to be more like Jeremiah. And that's what God has shown me through this. Uh, he was nicknamed the weeping prophet. We discussed that. Uh, the book of Jeremiah is, is one of the most spiritually transparent of all the prophetic writings. Okay, He, he lays it out there and, uh, and he's honest and he's, and he's brutally honest about you know, what God is, you know, his, how things should be and what he's doing. And then uh, look at the, despite the circumstances and the sorrows that, that he had over his, the people's sin, okay, he, he, Jeremiah had an unwavering confidence in God's faithfulness to his people. He, he, he believed fully that God could change anybody at any time. And it was evident in his writing. Okay, but but he understood that if, if if we didn't get right, and if the people didn't get right, he knew what was coming. That's why his heart was so heavy for him. He knew that God was going to judge these people if they didn't do things the way they needed to do, and they didn't turn their eyes back towards Jesus or back towards God. And that's what that's that's just kind of a synopsis. The purpose of the book of Jeremiah, the purpose of the book of Jeremiah, is to encourage repentance and faith by revealing the Lord's faithfulness to His promises, both to discipline and restore Israel. That's why he wrote the book of Jeremiah. And that was his synopsis for that. And, uh, and we're going to read from Jeremiah chapter 10 this morning. But before we do that, I want to go to the Lord in prayer and just ask Him to bless us this morning. God, thank You so much for, uh, for this opportunity, Lord, to come before You to open Your Word. Uh, God, I pray that, uh, that we will understand, Lord, uh, that this life is about serving You. It's about getting closer to You. Uh, it's not about chasing after the things of this world, Lord. It's not about uh, you know the 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 wealth and, and and chasing the good things that we think are good on this earth, God. It's about 
being close to you. It's about understanding what you'd have us to do, God, and just allowing the whole, allowing your spirit to work in our lives. And I pray that you'll do that in this building this morning. I pray that you'll bless every word that I say, God, that you will give me the words that you would have me to say, Lord, and, and that you will change hearts and that, if we, that we'll understand, God, that every time we walk in your house, if we don't leave with something uh, going towards you more than we were when we came in here, God, we're not where we need to be. And I pray this morning that you'll help us to do that, that you'll help us uh, to uh, to leave here this morning closer to the, closer to you than when we came. I uh, pray for these graduates and their families, God. Uh, I know what an emotional, emotional time this is for, for the families and for the graduates, Lord. And I pray, God, that you will put your hedge of protection around them and that way they will seek after you with their whole heart, dear God. And that they will understand that, that true success, that true success does not come from degrees and from big-time jobs. It comes from knowing you better and better each day. And I pray that we will be uh, ever, ever understanding of that this morning, God. We love you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, graduates, I, I, you know, and parents, I sympathize with you too. I sit there and watch those videos, and I'm starting to tear up my little boy. Uh, Athen finished up with pre-K the other day, and uh, you know I'm sitting there. It, it was that was hard on me. Uh, you know he's growing up, and he's finishing pre-K. That's emotional. I can only imagine what you, you, uh, you parents are going through. So my prayers are with you as well. Uh, you know we need to lift these parents up. We need to lift these families up. And we need to understand that, uh, you know, this is a different struggle for all of them, and you've all been through that. But, uh, but uh, just know that you will be in our prayers, and, and, and we appreciate what you've done in trying to invest in your kids and raising up godly kids that are going to be our future leaders in this world. That's what's so important. Uh, but we look, we're going to look this morning at, uh, at Jeremiah. We're going to start in Jeremiah chapter 10, and we're going to be reading from verses 23 and 24. Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 23 and 24. And when I was looking at this passage of Scripture, when God led me to this, uh, He led me to this part, and the title of it in my little subtitle in my Bible was Jeremiah's Prayer. Jeremiah's Prayer. So look at chapter 10, verse 23 with me. And it said, I know, O Lord, that a man's life is not his own. It is not for man to direct his steps. Correct me, Lord, but only with justice, not in your anger, lest you reduce me to nothing. Very, very powerful words. That first verse again, verse 23, uh, is very similar to, to a verse in Proverbs that God led me to through, uh, through this decision, uh, this career change with me. It's not about, you know, you look here and it talks about, uh, you know, we, uh, we as human beings, we, we make plans for our lives. And there's nothing wrong with that. We need to be, we need to make, we need to have goals. We need to have, uh, we need to have things that we want to reach. We need to try to be the best. I want to be the best I can be in whatever I'm doing. Okay, whether I'm practicing football, whether I'm learning football, whether I'm, I'm being a daddy, whether I'm being a husband, I want to be the best I can be. And I think God has called us to do that. Whether you're a salesman, whether you, uh, you know, uh, you're a, a laborer, whatever you do, God has called us to be great. He, he, he wants us to be great. Because if we're great, we can give more honor and glory to Him. If we're working as hard as we can in whatever field God has put you in, graduates, when you go to school, God wants you to be, He wants you to get after it. He wants you to be the best student you can be. Because that, that gives you opportunities to bring more honor and glory to God. But we need to understand, and it tells us right here, that, that we under, we got to understand that, that, uh, that it's not about us, that our life is not our own. Okay, We need to understand that our life is not our own. We need to understand that we need to submit to the fact that everything we have belongs to God. Everything we have, the ability to get up and tie our shoes that we take for granted every day, brush our teeth, those things. We need to understand that God gives us the ability to do those things. We need to understand that everything we do, everything that God allows us to do and blesses us with, it, it comes from Him. It's not ours. We need to understand that God is in command and only... Those, and this is very important, only those who let God direct their ways will be truly blessed. And we're going to read Jeremiah 29, 11. You've all heard that verse. We're going to read, we're going to go to that chapter in just, or that uh, chapter of the Jeremiah in just a second. But we understand, you know, it's not a prosperity, it's not a prosperity gospel. That's not what that's teaching. You know, God is, you know, if we want to be truly successful, if we want to be truly successful in life, it's not about degrees. It's not about uh, how much money we make. Again, like we said in our prayer a while ago, it's about how close we can get to Jesus Christ. What impact? You know, I told, uh, you know, when I, when I made the decision to step down as head coach at West Lawn and felt God truly, completely leading me, uh, it was the hardest thing I've ever done. But it was also the clearest. 
It was also the clearest because I had prayed. I'd say, sit, uh, you know, I'd been seeking God through prayer and fasting. And He made it very clear to me that He, uh, it's not about me understanding. It's not about me understanding what He's got in power. It's about me being obedient to it. It's not about us, it's not about us wanting to do this. I had no intentions two months ago to be an assistant at Blackie County next year. I didn't, I didn't even see that in the cards. But God has opened so many doors. He's, he's, he's made it clear that if we are obedient to Him, He can use us in, in such, a, such a mighty way. Such a mighty way. So I just want to challenge you and make sure that, uh, you know, that we understand and that we understand that God has called us all to be the best we can be in whatever He's called us to do. And if we'll do that, graduates, you've got these, you, you're, going, you're going to be going into, these, into the, the lines then. You're going to be going into these public schools. You're going to have freedom. You're not going to be under mom and daddy necessarily. You may, be, you may be moving out. You may be going to stay in a dorm. You may be on campus. You may still be at home, wherever you're at. You're going to be faced with different challenges. You're going to be faced with different things. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be different. You know, I remember when I was in college, I ended up uh, graduating from Trinity and went to Liberty University. And you're talking about a culture. So I went seven and a half, eight hours away. I uh, thought I was ready for that. And I learned real quick I wasn't. I remember when Mama and them left me up there and I, I looked down, I was like, man, I'm in Virginia. I'm in Virginia and I don't know. This, this, ain't, this, this ain't Danville, Georgia. This ain't Dublin, Georgia. This is, this is different. And, uh, and, you know, I had to adjust. But you've got to understand, guys, that if you'll stay grounded, and, and some things we're going to talk about in a minute. If you'll stay and understand that, that, that the answer and the, the, the answer to the struggles of this world is you're not going to find it at college. You're not going to find it in, you know, not going to find it in these, these books that you're going to have to spend tons of money on. You're not going to find it. Those things are important. You got to do those while you're here. But you got to understand that the book that you've got to stay in more than anything is this one right here. Amen. The Word of God. Graduates, if you go, I'm pleading with you. And you're going to hear some of this stuff again this afternoon if you come to the back of the Lord, because this is so important. God has put uh, the, the power of prayer and Scripture reading and, mem and memorization of Scripture. God has just overwhelmed me the past couple months with the importance of that. And, and just understanding that this is our instruction book. And if we're not in it, uh, guys, we cannot. It clearly states in this Bible, it tells us in Romans chapter 8, which I've had the opportunity to preach out of uh, three different times over the past uh, uh, month and a half. It tells us we cannot defeat on our own. We do not have the, fight, the power to defeat the, the, the Satan and the things that he's going to throw at us. We do not have the power. We have to stay in God's Word. We have to allow. And now it tells us, also it tells us in God's Word that if we do stay, in, stay near God, He'll never put anything on us that we cannot defeat. He'll never put anything on us. What an awesome promise that is. The power of the Holy Spirit, if you're a true follower of Jesus Christ and you've given your life to Christ, that, that Holy Spirit is inside of you. The Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that, that, of the Trinity that, that, that was there when God was raised from the dead is inside of us. That, man, what power is that? That's right. We have so much power at our fingertips. If we'll just understand, there's nothing, graduates, that you're going to face. I've used the old, old, old saying before, I, the devil made me do it. I couldn't help it. That's a lie straight from hell. That's, that's a lie. We can defeat it. We can defeat it, and it tells us that clearly in God's Word. If you'll depend on God, if you'll stay grounded, if you'll understand that sometimes you may have to be different. We're called to be different, and it's okay. It's okay. Don't give in to the things of this world. Try to set yourself apart and be different, and man, see what God... You're talking about being blessed? You'll be blessed if you do that. If you want to make an impact in this world, be different. It's, it's different now. It, you know, it's not, it's not unusual now. It's more, it, you know, if you look, you look at our society and the way our world is, it's much more. It's much more different. Is you, you want to be different and set your path differently? It's much more different to be a true follower of Jesus Christ. It's, that, that's, not, that's, not the, that's not the norm anymore. Not even close. The norm is to go and do the things of this world. And we've got to understand that this world, our time here, whatever God leaves us here for with, that's just a blip on the, on the, on the radar. And that's what God has just kind of changed my whole mindset. It's not about, you know, that they asked me, uh, and I had the opportunity to tell these reporters and stuff, you know, when I get to, when I get to glory and I stand before Christ, He's not going to ask me how many games I won as a football coach. He's not going to ask me that. He's going to ask me what I did with the people. I'm going to be held accountable for what I did with the people that He put under me and under my influence. The people that you are put up. You have people under your influence. You may not realize it, but you do. 
You have co-workers. You have family. You have friends. There, That is your circle. That's what you're going to be judged for. That's what you're going to be held accountable for. Not how much money you made. Not how many degrees you have. Not how many wins you get. You're going to be... It's not about that. That's what God has hammered home with me the past few months. And it, does that tell, is that telling you not to be successful? Not, absolutely not. Again, I've already expressed the point that I fully believe if we're putting our shoes on and we're tying our shoes, I'm going to tie my shoes better than you. That's just, that's just my philosophy. And we should be that way. And we should teach our kids to be that way. But we've got to understand, folks, that that ain't what it's about. That ain't what it's about. It's how close, to, you know, the, this blip on the radar screen is just, the, you know, we get so caught up in this, this world and this life, and we have to, to an extent, and we can't help that because of our human nature. But we better understand that we better look at the big picture. This is the pregame. I used to tell my kids this all the time out at West Lawrence. And some of you may have heard me say it. This is the pregame. This is the pregame. The real deal starts when we go to meet Jesus in eternity. That's, that's, that's eternity. It's eternity. We sometimes feel, I know you seniors, you probably have felt like this year is dragged along. Uh, I can tell you, you know, I, I used to not believe people when they told me that the, as you get older that the time goes by faster. Uh, but, buddy, I, and, uh, you, and you older folks know exactly what I'm talking about. It does. It does. I cannot believe I'm 21 years removed from high school now. It's crazy. But if I, I just challenge you, I, I mean, I, I can't believe it. But you better understand, seniors that, that, that are leaving here, that it's, it's going to change. It's going to go by fast. It's going to go by fast. And let's, let's look at quickly. Let's look at uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14. I'm going to tell you a few things about the God I felt like God has showed me through this. And then we'll get, get ready to close. The 29, verse 11, you've all heard this. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. And look at a few things from that. And it tells us right here, what, a, what an awesome promise. Uh, God is always there. God's always there and He's always thinking about me. Is that not awesome? God desires to have, and this is what, this is what we can't wrap our mind around a lot of times, is that God desires to have an intimate relationship with me. He desires to have an old heathen, broken vessel. He wants to have an intimate relationship with me. And that, that's a powerful thing. He wants to have that intimate relationship with you. He wants to get, and he's going, if you're a true follower of Christ, he's going to go with you to college. He's going to go with you to the workplace. He's right there. He wants to intimately know you. That, is that not an awesome, awesome promise? It is, it's, it's so encouraging to hear that. Okay? His thoughts are not, are of peace. They're not of evil. Alright? It's hard for some people to believe that. You know, you look back in, in, in what Jeremiah was talking about here. Uh, you know, a lot of the people, they had been in a 70-year exile in Babylon. Okay, so say, hey, you, you think about it, we think we struggle with things. These people, had, for 70 years, you know, they kind of felt like God had abandoned them, but He hadn't. People were tempted to believe that God had forgotten them. But God had already appointed their day of release. It was already appointed. They just had to do the right thing and follow Him. We want things to be fixed now. We want permanent fixes. We want to be fixed now, but we have to be patient. And we need to understand that God has a plan for our lives. He has a plan for you, graduates. He has a plan for you. He has a, but it's not, it may not be what you plan. Like I told you at the beginning, never in a million years. I told I said when I went to college, I ain't, I'm not going to be a teacher. I ain't no way. But what the idea? Never in a million years would I imagine I've been up in front of a group speaking and been able to preach God's Word. Never in a million years. God's got a plan for you. You need to find what His plan is and not what your plan is. Seek out His plan for your life. That's the greatest advice I can give you. I tried to think about something that I could say to make a difference in your lives. That's the greatest advice I can give you. Try not to, you know, it's not about what we want. Don't seek out your own plan. Try to find out what God has in store for you. And you know how you do that? You do it on your knees. You do it on your knees. You do it in studying God's Word daily. And I'm not talking about just a little, a little verse of Scripture here now. I'm talking about studying God's Word. And graduates, make sure you make a time for that. I, I just can't. I've wasted so much time in my life not studying and knowing God's Word. And my life would have been so much better if I'd have done that. And then I'm not talking about the now lay me down to sleep prayers. I'm talking about heartfelt prayers before the throne of Jesus Christ. 
Get out on your knees and pray to God. And understand that you don't have to be by yourself. You can pray to Him at any time. You can pray to Him when you're driving down the road. Don't close your eyes. But you can pray with Him when you're driving down the road anytime. That's the great thing about our God, and He's there, and He'll speak back to you. The amazing thing is, if we'll just if we'll slow down enough and listen to Him, He'll speak to you, and He will show you what He what He wants you to do. But you have to seek Him to do that. You have to seek Him to do that. The results of discovering and seeking God with all your heart, you'll have peace. No longer fighting my battles alone. You'll have comfort. We can rest in the fact that God is always here. Courage. The Lord is on my side. There's no reason to truly fear fear the what men is going to do to me. And then salvation. He already appointed my day of deliverance. And I will arrive safely at home. My journey, when I get to the end of this little blip, this little pregame, I know because I've given my life to Christ and I'm a true follower of Christ, I know where I'm going to be. Amen. Man, praise God for that. Amen. And every one of you in here today can, can have that blessed assurance. Can have that blessed assurance. So what a glorious promise if, we, if we're true followers of Christ. And we'll close this morning. And uh, again, I appreciate this opportunity, but I just want to leave you with, uh, with, with just, just understanding. And, and that goes for graduates. It goes for everybody in this room. You know, this is not just a message for the graduates. This is a message I believe that God wants us all to understand. You know, to understand that, you know, to be truly close and be, to, to get as close to God as we can. It's not about, you know, going, I, I've been blessed to get, I guess, if you count my high school degree, i got four degrees now. You know, and that's, that's, that's all well and good. Okay? But the, that doesn't, that's not even a blip on God's radar. He wants me to do my best. He wants you to do your best, graduates. He wants you to be your best. He wants you to go out and, 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 and make a difference in this world. But how do you make that true difference in this world? It's not about the money you make. It's not about the job you have. It's about how close you can be to God. What kind of follower of Christ can you be? And that's my challenge for you today. For everybody in this room, no matter what you did last night, no matter where you've been, today is the day of repentance. You can repent now. You can get right with God. And He can use you. In whatever field you're in, He can use you if we'll just be obedient and allow Him to do it. And again, I thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. And, uh, and give, forgive me this opportunity. I'm going to turn this over to, to Pastor Van now. Thank y'all. Amen. The most important thing anybody will ever do is be determined to follow Jesus. Amen. Nothing. Let's go forward in prayer. Head bowed.